Hello and welcome to the Y2PMV podcast, where I, Soraz, and one other guest talk about anything and everything Y2PMV. This is episode 8 featuring Marlon, aka Tone Deaf. Marlon has been an active member of the community for a long time, making quality videos for a full decade and counting. Along with Y2PMV, he is a member of Siva Gunner, which has many crossovers with Y2PMV and its community. Marlon is a genuine and fun person who has made some of my personal favorite videos through the years. Go check out his channel on YouTube as Tone Deaf, as well as on Twitter at Marlon, spelled M-A-R-L-N-N-N. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy. I guess to start off, I'll just ask you, how did you get into YTP and YTPMV? Hmm. So, first things first, it's probably the opposite of a lot of people, because I know a lot of people first got into like YTP or YTPMV. Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, this barbecue pork is pretty good. But, yeah, for a lot of people, it's YTP that brings them into YTPNV. Um, for me, it's the opposite. It was YTPNV that brought me into YTP. Uh, I had a friend group back in, like, late 2008, early 2009. Uh, we used to call ourselves the Retro Video Game Kids because we used to, like, be into, you know, Famicom, Atari, Commodore 64, stuff like that. And one of our guys, Chase, used to make YTPNVs. Um, through him, I learned about Atomic Baby 1, 2, 3, and I got into contact with Atomic Baby, and I was like, hey, I like these videos, Chase is a total dickwad, can you show me how to make these? And sure enough, <laughs> he went on screen share on Skype, and he was showing me the ropes, so that's how I basically Holy got into shit. it. Fuck you, Chase. That's cool. Yeah, that that was definitely a rare thing back in the day for anybody to like be that nice and just show you. That's crazy. Yeah, shout out to Atomic Baby123. Still talk to him. Great person. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so glad I'm so glad he's still making videos. Yep. Honestly. But uh yeah, so that was in two thousand eight or nine you said. So damn, that was a long time. <laughs> yeah, I've been making these stupid videos for nearly what now? Eleven years? Yeah. Yeah, it's such a long time. But I mean like it's I, I feel like I feel like it's uh, at least you know it's a creative thing, so you just kind of like that's always been my thing about white PMV, right? Is like at least it's creative. At least I'm getting like something creative out of it. Yeah, and I of don't course. Just, like play games all the time. Especially like once you get into certain different things with white PMV, like certain aspects of it, like visuals and stuff, it starts to lead into more things. Like honestly, white PMV taught me a lot about motion design. And using different functions of like After Effects and stuff like that in order to get a certain effect, and I feel like it's a big, big, big potential in it for people to expand on what they're making. Like, there's a lot of creatives that started off with YTPMV that are doing much more now, and like, it's just crazy to think they go from making these things to making what they're doing now. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Do you? Uh, so, what what exactly do you do? Like. Uh, outside of white pmv like professional wise like d I, I i've seen some on your twitter sometimes you'll do like uh like montage edits and stuff like that and just like cool little videos like that yeah so aside from white pmv in like 2012 to 2014 i would say i was doing a lot of like call of duty game edits um it was nice because people would pay you to just edit these videos and it's not the easiest thing to do, especially when you're working with people who are sending you, like, 20 FPS, 30 FPS clips. But, I mean, at the time, I wasn't working. I was too young to work. So, for me, it brought in income for me. So, it was a big thing for me. And aside from that, nowadays, I do just different type of edits for people for just, like, vlogs and stuff like that. And if it wasn't for y 2 pmv I honestly wouldn't know my way around programs like After Effects and Sony Vegas. Yeah. Damn, that's cool. I so what like pushed you over the edge to start learning After Effects, or were you always pretty gung ho about wanting to learn After Effects? Honestly, mm, it was seeing the stuff that Marlon was making, Gangster Kid. Oh yeah. So originally, I had assumed that he was using After Effects, so I downloaded After Effects because I know that was a lot of other people were using. And it wasn't up until I started learning the program that I finally asked him, like, hey, how do you do this effect? And he goes, oh, yeah, you know, I just have Boris and I do this. And I'm like, wait, what? 
And he's like, yeah. <laughs> he goes, I use like three different DAW eggs to make these things. And I'm like, wait, you're using Sony Vegas to make these things? And he's like, yeah. That's crazy. I, I, I thought that he was using like way back in like uh, 2013, 2014. Yep. Oh, damn. Yeah. I thought he was using After Effects back then. No, too. no, no. He was using Sony Vegas. It's like uh, Pesky. Pesky was the same situation. There's a lot of effects that look like you could easily do them in After Effects, but instead of doing that, they're going through different project files on Vegas and making like four dot veg file projects, and it's nuts because these tracks, well, these videos have like hundreds of tracks in them, and it's just crazy to think you're gonna put that much effort into one video when you could go into After Effects and you could do the same effects with just like one or two tracks. Yeah. Honestly, okay, speaking about Pesky, I don't understand how he makes some of those YTPs. They are so fucking cool. Like, especially in Vegas. Like, oh, I wish I wish I had that YTP creativity to to make that kind of thing. Because those, those videos are so fucking cool. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Because Pesky has been around for a really long time. And it wasn't up until he opened up the Pesky account that he started to really blow up. Because he had previous accounts before that. And... I feel like he takes a lot of inspiration for people like, um, I still probably like Kirkop, uh, Daniel Radcliffe, 777, um, just people of that nature. Maybe, um, I think what was his name? Cup of Ice Water, another big white peer, uh, Lick Lickety yeah. for sure. I, I've kind of, I kind of, I would also say Dozzy. I don't know if they take inspiration from one another That's but they're white the other way around i feel like dozzy took a lot of inspiration from pesky oh yeah shout out to dozzy yeah, i don't know i yeah i'll have to ask him sometime but fuck went to the same middle school oh really holy shit yeah That's cool damn did you guys know each other back then no <laughs> damn that's weird yeah so being in la you probably have plenty of connections to like random shit do you ever like Try to show people white to PMV. Like, what did they think about it? Um, I've definitely had opportunities to show white to PMVs to different people. I'm trying to think, like, what's the biggest person? Um, Syndicate on oh, YouTube yeah. a while back. Uh, I used to play with them on Xbox, COD Zombies, stuff like that. I showed him a white to PMV. It was just like one of his videos that I YTP and V'd, and he loved it. I mean, he liked it. He had shared it on his page. It was pretty crazy. And this was a channel that wasn't directly mine. I shared it with somebody else, and once he got word of this happening, um, he just deleted the channel. I guess he just got jealous or something. What the fuck? Yeah, I can't remember who I shared the channel with. What was it called? Um, I think it was like intel accelerator cp or something like that adam oh. accelerator cp yeah i don't i don't i don't remember that at all yeah it was a pretty small channel it had like 30 ish subs but that one video had like 40k views damn which yeah, this was like 2013 2014 so that's a lot of views for that time yeah yeah, yeah. that was a that was a fuck ton back then yeah i remember when uh when uh, Motendu first got, like, partnered or whatever, and we are all like, holy shit, you know, YTP and are getting partnered, that's fucking huge, and now it's just, like, now it's not even cool anymore, like, there are plenty of YTPers with, like, the check mark, like, even Triple Q's, I'm pretty sure, has, like, the verified check mark on YouTube. Yeah. Which is crazy to think, honestly, but, yeah, it's a lot more common now. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's, yeah. like, I still remember... I got partnered back in, like, 2010, 2011. So it was huge, you know? Because people would see the banner on your page, and they're like, oh, my God, this person is a YouTube partner. Yeah. But with me, at the time, I really had, like, 1,500 subs. So people were like, what the fuck? How's this person a partner? Like, he hardly gets any views. And it was just funny to see people's reactions. What was your old channel called before uh, Tone Deaf? Um, well, I've had multiple channels. This one was called... Marlin Dudeful. I forgot. I think the whole reason it became Marlin Dudeful was I was trying to make my username Marlin Dude, but that one was used up. So I ended up going with Marlin Dudeful because it was suggested. But yeah, that <laughs> yeah. was like one of my channels. Then I had a channel where I made like shitty, shitty, shitty YTP and V's where I was trying to copy YTP for life. It was <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Breakfast CP. That was like my 2009 channel. <laughs> God, that's fucking funny. <laughs> so damn, you had you had like 1,500 subs and partnered way back then. I had no idea about that. That's because like that was always something that I I really wanted when I was first starting YouTube. Because I started out in like Let's Plays way back in like 20 oh 2009. I was young. I'm I'm young, so I'm like I'm pretty much as old as a year or a year older. So like I was nine turning ten in 2009, but I was getting into Let's Plays. And yeah. I really wanted, and and anytime I saw that banner, I was like, "Oh, I want the banner so <laughs> bad." Yeah, I'm 22, but at the time, that channel wasn't anything to do with YTPMVs or YTPs. What I was doing on that channel was just like let's plays, game reviews. Mm. I was uploading Call of Duty edits, stuff like that. So it was completely away from YTPMV and YTPMVs. Yeah, yeah. Do you so? going forward like do you still do you do you think you'll ever take like take it more serious with white supreme view or do you think it'll always just be like this kind of thing that you do sometimes for fun you know every now and then uh i don't think so and i think that's like a big topic right here is i find the point of white supreme view to be fun and i feel like once you start taking it seriously and try to polish everything it doesn't become fun anymore it takes away that factor that makes it what it is yeah, yeah. Like like having like the rawness of of white PMV is like something that's always attracted me, I feel. Cuz like uh, to me, like the whole the whole point of it is finding samples that sound like the song that you're trying to do or yeah, sentence exactly. make somebody to say something. And it it just kind of I don't know. That uh, but that's like my interpretation. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, because the thing is, like, once you start taking it so seriously, you start looking at the comments, you start to get, you know, bad feelings from what people have to say. You know, somebody says, oh, you know, this shouldn't be this way. You start to get pissed off about it, it starts to agitate you, and that's not, you know, what it's about. It's about having fun. And once you start just making jokes and stuff like that, even when it isn't a joke, if you're just making a YTPMB that's just, like you said, raw, that's the fun in it, is making something that's raw and not trying to put so much time and effort into it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, I, I kind of equate, like, current people who take it, like, super, super, super seriously, which I, I'm, I love. I'm glad that people are taking it super seriously because those videos are fun to watch. I just don't know if I would go that far. But I always, I, I can't help but think back to Rabies when he made, like, that whole, like, I am not white to I am using this to push everything into music and learn music through this and whatever. And it's just like, I mean, you, I, I understand that you're learning like video editing. That's really cool. But like, I, I, I can't see where the, I, I, after like a certain point, the amount of time that you put into it and what you get out of it goes way down and yeah. it already, and it already isn't very rewarding in the first place. So like, I guess credit to the people who do put that much time into it, but at the same time, it's like, I'm genuinely surprised that as many people put that much time into it as they do yeah if like that makes sense do you remember the video we went to cookie country uh no let me look it up i'll literally link it to you right now but this video was a joke back in 2014 but this is like literally the embodiment of what people are trying to do nowadays with ytpnv because the joke of the video is you know they have full visual setup they have samples that kind of sound like the notes but the joke is there are no samples. It's not a YTPMV. It's literally just the song playing. But people aren't trying to do this nowadays. People are trying to make YTPMVs <laughs> that sound exactly like the song. And, you know, I don't see the fun in that. Yeah, yeah. I I, I remember... I, I, I do know about this video. I just didn't know the fucking title. Yeah, it, it is pretty funny. Like, uh... And I don't... I don't really... Like, I was talking about this recently on Twitter. And it was basically just like... The way that I see it is people have different like interpretations of what they what white PMV should be, what they enjoy out of it. And so of course like different people are gonna see it different ways and then people are gonna clash. So it's like you can't really f fault or get you can't really like say like, oh, hey, no fake sample white PMVs because like that's how they enjoy it. That's how other people yeah, enjoy it. Totally. It's like, you know, teach their own. I'm just being a white PMV boomer.
Yeah, yeah. And and I and I'm sure a lot of people share your sentiments, but uh I don't know. The what what I have enjoyed recently though is the amount of like the influx of people from Siva Gunner just making YTP Vs every now and then. That's that's been pretty fun to see. Yeah, it's crazy because there's these people who you know, they've never made a YZPMV before, but they've made plenty of different other things, you know, commonly called rips and stuff like that on the channel. And then out of nowhere, they're like, hey, I want to try to make a YZPMV, and they make their first YZPMV, and it sounds fucking amazing. And I'm like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, it sounds great. You know, it sounds better than anything I could ever make. I helped uh, Nick, Nate Mango out with that. I sent him, like, a full, like, source folder. <laughs> and I did not give him any uh, any guidance. I didn't, he just went at it for like yeah. a week and his first video was fantastic with like like good visuals and everything it's just crazy but uh yeah so what's what's your story behind getting into see beginner um i forget i think it was they uploaded a video for redial where it goes into like um what was it i think take on me and what I did was I made a YTPMV with it. I used H3H3 as a source, and Zar hits me up, and Zar was like, "Hey, you know, this would be good content for channel. Have you like ever thought about making stuff for the channel?" And I was like, "Not really." I was like, "But I mean, if you want me to, I could." He's like, "All right, give me one second. And next thing I know, I get added to the Discord server, and just since then, I've been making more dumb videos. And funny enough, at that same time, I was actually thinking of quitting White PMV. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> why? Why was that? Just because it was like, wasn't your passion? Like you didn't find too much enjoyment into it anymore? Yeah, because this was like mid twenty seventeen, and all the people that were making videos, you know, when I started making videos up until that point, a lot of them had dropped off and stopped making videos. So at that point. All the people I was watching weren't making stuff anymore, so I didn't have any type of motivation to push me to make new videos. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, was it, that that was back in 2016. This was 2017. Yeah. 2017. So, yeah. That was definitely a rough patch, I would say. Yeah, that's uh, when for, like motivation. Yeah, sorry to cut you off. Um, but yeah, oh, that's like fine. back when Shalik stopped making YTPMBs and YTPs. Um. Andrew kind of dropped off at the same time. Uh, Phazon slowed down a bit on videos. And other people from that certain group stopped making videos in general. So it was a lack of motivation. Yeah, yeah. Especially when, like, I mean, frankly, everybody in the mechs chat has been, like, the, the, like, I don't know, top of the top, I would guess. I, I mean, the top dogs, essentially. And, like, the quality of videos that they make for years. And when they when they started slowing down, you could tell that like nobody else was getting motivation. And, oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was like I was like rewatching not that long ago uh, some videos from 2015 and 2016, and fucking Marcelo. Uh, uh, I don't remember what his username was, but he like Marcelo. single. Yeah, yeah, he like single handedly carried 2015 and 2016 with his videos he had so many good videos back then i can't believe it honestly like looking back that they're from 2015 yeah some of the videos marcelo makes are nuts like his dino blade video was crazy yeah. and just the quality of all the content he makes is just nuts yeah yeah it's really good 2015 was fucking rough for yeah. like no reason and then undertale came out and then everybody made their undertale <laughs> and john tron white pmvs yep john tron and undertale <laughs> uh, so um i see that you have i white pmv everything written down here uh what are your what are your what are your thoughts on i white pmv everything Ah, uh, man i don't know i feel like those are the type of people I was talking about earlier. The people who take Y2PMV very seriously to the point where they care about every little small detail. And when somebody points out something that they didn't notice, it just knocks their whole thing out of whack. And they start to get angry about things. And it's just like, I know there's certain people in that group. I'm not going to say any names that are toxic in general. Yeah. And 
you know, that goes back to Czar. I know a lot of people from that channel were harassing Czar a while back. And, you know, due to that and other reasons, he doesn't really make videos anymore. Because people were just targeting him and harassing him. And, you know, when you're in a group of people and you have people like that in your group, it brings a bad image to the whole group itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, so, the, that's basically been my sentiment as well, yeah. Yeah, so it takes, you know, a couple bad apples then the whole tree looks bad. And that's how I feel about IYDP and B everything, you know? They had a couple bad apples, and now my image of them is ruined, you know? Because I don't know if that person or those people are still involved in the group, but honestly, I don't care because they've already messed up in one way or another, and now I don't like the image that they have. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. It, it's, kinda, it's kind of amazing how people can be toxic towards, like, the most, like, nonsensical shit for no reason. Yeah. And it's it's just like, I don't know. I I feel like it would get, like, I don't know. It would get better with age with some people. Because, like, the argument that we always, that we say, like, when we look back in, like, 2013 is, well, we were dumb kids, you know. Lots of us were fucking preteens, teenagers. And we were just, like, mean because we thought that edgy comedy was funny. But it's, like, 2020, you know. It's, people have grown up and... I, I I guess I don't know. Some some people just see it as like banter and I don't know. And I'm not I'm not calling any specific person out, honestly, with this. It's just like when when it happens a couple times to people that you respect, then that whole group gets a negative image, like you said. Yeah, and it's like when somebody is you know, being a fucking what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to use the R word because a lot of people don't like that word anymore. <laughs> um, a moron. I'll just say if yeah, somebody's being a moron, moron and somebody starts to harass him, you know, that's a given. But in Zara's situation, Zara wasn't doing shit. And they were still coming after him. And I'm like, what the fuck is the point of that? And they were really pushing it too. Yeah. And he, him and I were talking recently and he was talking about how uh, people were, people like even now keep commenting on that one uh, fucking Undertale video that he made on his all. Oh, uh, let me find it. I don't remember what it was called. I'm gonna be mad if I don't find it. It's like that. It was like some Pizza Day video, and people are like still commenting on it, like today, that are just like giving him shit for it. It's just like why, for no reason. And yeah, you're right. You're right. It really fucks with motivation when uh you just have like random people keep giving you shit about your videos. Yeah. So, moving into, like, uh, for you and your videos, like, who would you say are your top three inspirations? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, let's see. I think I take a lot of inspiration from Andrew. Yeah. Um, sorry, Andrew. I know you don't like to, you know, talk about your old alias, but Radok. Yeah. And um, I would say another big inspiration is Atomic Baby, of course, because I mean he taught me how to basically white to PMV. <laughs> and probably Phazon as well. Those are probably my top three inspirations. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Phazon, Phazon, from my understanding, from like other people who are talking about him, he just draws inspiration like they'll from literally anything. Like he'll just watch a movie. And he'll just be like, haha, that would be funny. And then he goes and use, uses that as like a source in like some yes, long video. Exactly. And That's it's... what I love about Phazon is the fact that some of the sources he uses are just so diverse and it's hilarious. Yeah, I would I would I, I like those top three. Yeah. It's like if you think about Phazon in that sense, you could also relate that to um Dismio. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He he was oh my god I wish I wish he still made videos he was like so ahead of his time honestly oh yeah I was nuts yeah like that that one um oh uh, um love you love you whatever that mighty switch force song white to PMV he did he just like improv like a yes. sick baseline for like yes. no reason <laughs> and it's so good I'm just like what the fuck where did that come from yeah it's amazing so. Would you would you say that like currently where you stand you're underappreciated in the community or do you really even care that much? 
Um, I wouldn't say that I'm underappreciated, because if I did, I would say I would probably care too much. There are certain videos that I make that don't get as many views, as many comments as other ones do, but then again, that's the whole thing about YTPMVs. You can make a stupid video, and it'll get tens of thousands of views, and you can make a video that you put a lot of effort into, and it won't get any views. And yeah. I feel like that's a big case with me. If I make, like, you know, funny video... It gets thousands of views. If I make, oh, serious YTPMV, it gets, like, maybe, like, 500 views max. Like, one of my most stupid videos has 100k views, and I find that nuts, considering I made it in under, like, a minute. Yeah. And another video that took me, like, a couple of days to make only has, like, 600 views. Yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy how it works like that. Um, I, found, I found the same thing, especially on Twitter, because, like... Twitter, it, it all comes down to whether one of your friends who has, like, 10k followers retweets it or not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> On whether exactly. it gets popular. <laughs> exactly. Because I see YTPMVs on Twitter, and, you know, I see somebody make one, and I make one, and it'll be, like, the same fad, same meme, or whatever. And it's, like, my YTPMV is better, and it only has, like, you know, five retweets or whatever. This person's is complete shit, and it has, like, you know thousands of retweets and that's like those big meme creators and stuff like that like i don't know how you can be making videos with this and have like millions of subscribers millions of followers and you still don't know how to fucking pitch shift or you know <laughs> get your timing right yeah like yeah. grande in them yeah well yeah because a lot of them a lot of them like some of their I, I don't even know their origin specifically but i know a lot of them do have like a ytp background um or YTPMV. Like, uh, uh, Yamaice, I yeah. think he, he came from YTPMV because I see a lot of his old comments. Speaking of that, oh, something, something that I like found out, uh, the other day. I was like just going through some of my really old videos and I made, uh, like the first, like the first year that I actually started making stuff in YTPMV in 2013, I made like a compilation, like an end of year compilation. I was looking through the comments and I found uh you, so you know critical uh Oh yeah. His friend Andrew uh Andrew left a comment on that video asking for some videos. And at the time, you know, I had no idea who it was. But now like I look back I'm like what the fuck? That's Andrew. <laughs> That's fucking cool. That's but, hilarious. Yeah, it's just like random people are like in this community. And then like uh then you have like people like Lazy Purple commenting on random shit. It's just cool. I seeing like popular people who don't make it but still enjoy it and appreciate it yeah that's awesome yeah going back to your um like professional work or whatever uh how has that process went from transitioning from ytpmv to that is it is it pretty smooth and fluid like you don't really have any issues or was there like a bit more that you had to learn about the programs or whatever uh there's a bit more you gotta learn because once you get into like professional grade editing, you got to learn about different things like color grading. You got to make sure you got smooth transitions. You got to make sure that the video itself is shot correctly. And if it's not shot correctly, you got to figure out a way to actually manage it and fix it as best as you can. And that's something that you don't really, you know, bring into consideration with YTPMB is the actual video quality of whatever you're sourcing. And if there's any imperfections in the video that you could fix with the program you're using. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, was, I would say that it's not the smoothest transition, but then again, it's not the roughest one either. It's like a good medium. Yeah, yeah. And is that mostly in like After Effects and stuff that you do that in? Or do you use Vegas as well? Oh no, Vegas for sure. I use Vegas for like most of my syncing and stuff like that. Then once it comes to like post effects, like color grading and anything of that sort, I bring it into After Effects. But for a lot of people I know that do professional grade editing, they're going to be, for the most part, using Vegas for any type of syncing and timing than After Effects for any other effects. Hmm. Do you actually find quite a few people who use Vegas? I do, actually. Um, especially, like, friends of mine that do editing for, like, big organizations like FaZe and other people like that. They're, for the most part, using Vegas for the same thing, you know, syncing, timing, then they bring it into After Effects. Is that just because Vegas is honestly like easier to learn do you think and they just stuck with it or is it just easier for that one specific purpose 
Well, I think it's actually due to the fact that Vegas was like one of the bigger programs back in the day. So a yeah. lot of people learned how to use Vegas, and over time they learned how to use After Effects. But there were certain things that they found are easier to do with Vegas that rather than with After Effects. So they stuck true to that rather than trying to relearn these things and make them work in After Effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I was learning Vegas originally before I even like got into Y2PMV uh, because Chuck Conroy used Vegas. And I was like, oh, well, if he uses it, then I got to get it too. <laughs> and yeah. then I started learning it just as like a normal editing tool. Oh, I I I saw recently that Magix is making like some like Vegas Post, like uh, program, mm. and I don't know how good it is or if or if it's even out or anything. I don't know anything about it, but uh, if it has integration with Vegas, like uh, Premiere has, like with uh, everything else with After Effects, that could actually be a game changer because that's like the one thing that Adobe has up on vegas right now is the fact that you could just take something from premiere and go right to after effects with like no issues yeah that's great you know that's what makes it really seamless and i feel like something like that for vegas would be huge yeah and and they're working on like some program called like vegas stream where uh it's like a streaming software and i guess they're gonna have like integration with vegas which i don't even know how that would work <laughs> For like a streaming software but i don't know that, that seems kind of cool too but yeah. i don't know maybe i think magic needs to fix their fucking program before they do any <laughs> of that though for sure jesus christ uh so coming up on magfest 21 are we finally gonna see you there this year i mean if we're not all dead from covid19 at that point yeah I should have enough money to get a plane ticket and all that to MAGFest. I've been really holding off on that. I was supposed to go um, this year, but certain st things came up. And I know, I think Jab's birthday comes around on that same weekend, so definitely want to make it up to Jab and show up. Yeah, yeah. that That's going to be that's gonna be great. This uh, I'll finally be 21 this year for MAGFest. <laughs> nice! Which, uh, which is going to be fucking nice. Yeah, that'll uh, be exciting. But my birthday, my birthday's in May this year, so I'm probably gonna spend my 21st like in my apartment alone. But fuck That's it, whatever. That's so sad. Fuck COVID nineteen. <laughs> fuck COVID. Uh, do you, has has COVID helped with your inspiration at all to make things? Or oh yes, it? <laughs> it's been amazing. So, I I've been so bored to shit that sometimes I just open up Vegas and I'm like, haha, funny, and I start making a video, and. If you look at my channel, I've been uploading pretty fucking recently compared to just before. Like, before I'd make maybe one or two videos a month or something like that. Let's see, I have one, two, three, four videos within a week. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty nuts. Yeah, it. I I agree. It's It's been, it's been nice in that regard uh, for creativity and everything. But at the same time, uh, it's like... When you're always just like staring at like an empty Vegas screen and it's just like, uh, I want to make something, but I have zero ideas. That's like also equally as like almost as bad, honestly. I yeah, I think for me, the issue is trying to find a source because I have plenty of songs. I have literally maybe like over a thousand songs that I have split and ready to go. But just finding the right source is tough for me. I, normally, I don't like doing multi-source videos, but sometimes I just can't find a certain set of sources that I just say fuck it and I just go with the multi-source. Hmm, that's interesting because like for me, it's all about the song because yeah. like I I can I can pull in any source like I have like I anytime I see like a, a something of like oh I'll use it as a source sometime I'll just download it and then like if I see it in my download videos then I'll be like okay let's try this. But it's all about the song for me, and that's where that's where like I run into a fucking brick wall. But it's interesting that yours is the other way around, though. Yeah, definitely. Like if I'm um, <clears throat> oh shit, um... <laughs> you get you good? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. So okay. if I'm trying to use a certain source, let's say Jontron, I want every single sample to be Jontron. But one thing I don't like to do is I don't like to use the same video. I like to sample different videos just to give a variety in the sources and stuff like that. So I feel like yeah. that's what makes it so hard for me is trying to find different videos and trying to find samples out of every single one. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's hard. It's hard to fucking search for samples through like twenty minute John Tron videos. Like, yeah. unless unless there's like one specific bit that like everybody uses, then of course, then you could just go right to it. But like, I've I found that I find a lot more use with like a source that's a vine like seven seconds long or like some random video that's 10 seconds long i find a lot more use with just that than i do like any 20 minute long form gaming video or something yeah i get you yeah which i don't i don't know if it comes down to laziness or if it comes down to just like using like a seven second video to its max is interesting to me i don't really know what it is honestly <laughs> Speaking of seven minute videos, shout out to the people who can make a YT PMV that's over two minutes. That's crazy yeah. to me. Yeah, that shit that shit is insane. I don't think I've ever made a video longer than two minutes. Or I don't longer think... than, I don't yeah. I don't even know if I made a video longer than a minute and a half, honestly. Well YT PMV that is. Like are we counting looping a video or just in general, just going for a song that's longer than that amount of time? I would say just like yeah, I mean looping looping can count, I guess. But that's kind of like the lazy cop out way to do it, I feel. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Oh, just kidding. I I have a 2 minute I have a 2 minute video that I made last yeah, year. Yeah, you're nuts. Okay, that <laughs> that video uh have you ever seen this? I got this idea on yes. 420 420 2019 and uh I did the build up in one night like on 420. Uh, and then I woke up and I was like, I was like, oh hey, I made this, and uh, so I I came back to it. I was like, fuck, this is great. I gotta finish this, and uh, through and then when I posted it on Twitter, it made the rounds on EDM Twitter, and uh, there was like a lot of like random EDM artists and just like a lot of random people seeing it, and uh, that's the video that got me in contact with Matt Zo to start editing for his label, which awesome. I mean. It's it's not it's not much. It's just like live stream edits, but it's still just crazy how like one YTPMV can like propel you that far and start like start like it was my first editing gig ever, and it's with fucking Matt Zo. Like that's insane. Yeah, that's awesome. But it just goes to show that it can actually like happen to anybody. Honestly, you just it's just uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's luck because it's not really luck. It's just more like I don't know, right place, right time. <laughs> Yeah, huge props for that. And, you know, you bring up Twitter, so I want to backtrack and go back to Twitter. I feel yeah, like sure. Twitter is amazing. Twitter catapulted YTP and V, in my opinion, and YTP in general. Because there's just so many people making these videos now exclusively on Twitter. And it's nuts because it just brings, you know, YTP and V and YTP to a whole different platform. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that, like, I, I, anymore, YouTube is just like an archival service honestly like it's where it's where you go to watch long form 10 minute videos and where you go to watch music videos or listen to music sometimes whereas with twitter like when you when something blows up it fucking blows up like that doesn't yeah. happen on youtube anymore hardly you know it's not so much about going viral on youtube anymore it's about going viral on twitter nowadays yeah and then just getting a following on twitter and then building off of that because I feel for like the people who the the white PMV boomers who uh have like ten K subs or whatever but only have two hundred Twitter followers. <laughs> like oh that must be such that must be such like a shitty feeling. I guess I mean if you don't care that much, then you know, don't let it bother you, of course. But yeah. It it it'd be it'd be nice if, if there was like a simpler way to just like transfer the audience that you had on youtube over to twitter but no there's not really unless you just keep making shit yeah it's pretty nuts nowadays like if you look at um max for example quaid he has i think like somewhere around 300 and something followers on twitter and back in the day on youtube he had thousands of subs and he had like this following it's this huge following that basically every time he'd close a channel and open up a new channel He'd get thousands of subs super fast. Yeah, which is crazy, honestly. Fuck, but uh, yeah, and and now, now like, Twitter is, is such more versatile too, and the and like you can promote different things. You can, 
Like, I, I'm sure that there's people who follow me strictly because of my retweets. Like, I'm, I'm sure that there's, like, <laughs> At least, like, a hundred of my followers are just people who are just like, oh, this guy's good retweets and then follows me because of that. And, like, it, it's cool. It's cool that it doesn't have to, like, your account as a whole is content rather than just the stuff that you make. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I totally feel you on that. Like, there's people who, on Twitter who follow me just because of Siva Gunner. They're like, yeah, you know, I found your channel because of that. Speaking of which, I got my own wiki page for Siva Gunner a while back, like, maybe, like, a month ago. So... Like, you talked about me being underappreciated. I feel like that's nuts. You know, the fact that people went out of their way to write a wiki page for me is nuts. Yeah, yeah, that is crazy. Siva Gunner, Siva Gunner has, like, everybody in that and, like, all the fans are very devoted. It's a, I'm still surprised it's went on for as long as it did. Like, it's very, it's insane, honestly. Yeah, and it's crazy that it came back, too, because, you know, originally the channel ended. Then they decided to bring it back, and I'm super glad that they did because... You know, there's a lot of good friends in that group. I've learned a lot about, you know, different music theory and things like that through that group itself. Like, I remember one day I made a video, and I think it was Toon Link was like, hey, you know, the chords in this video, even though they sounded completely right, he was like, the chords in this video are completely wrong. You know, it's supposed to be A minor and all this stuff. And I'm like, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah. I, too, oh my god. I... I envy all of those people that have insane, like, music theory knowledge. And so everybody, everybody in Siva Gunner seems like that they have, like, insane fucking uh, music theory knowledge. Like, they they can make something so quick and make it sound so good and and it's, like, 100% correct. Uh, it's just, I love it. It's crazy. Yeah, so I was like, hey, dude, can you do me a favor? Can you, like, just record a solid note? <laughs> And then just send it to me and I'll pitch it to that. And that's what he did for every single note in the chord. He just basically recorded the note, rendered it out, sent it to me, and I basically just pitched it to that. <laughs> that's fucking funny. Uh, that Yeah, I, I had him help me on chords uh, recently this year too. Because, fuck, chords are such a pain in the ass. I <laughs> yeah. hate chords. Uh, I, wish, I wish I was better at it. I need yeah. to, like, actually, like, learn something. Definitely. Like, theory. chords, they're easy to do when, you know, you have a split track or whatnot. But when you're doing them by ear, that is the fucking bane of my existence. Yeah. Yeah. And I do and I do everything by ear. Like, I don't do any split tracks. You know, uh, and, like, which... big props to you. Big props to you and big props to everybody who's able to do it by ear. Because I can't. So, I see these, like, multi-track videos with, like eight or more tracks and they're all done by ear and i'm like wow good job to you uh going back to ytp and everything core i know he's like one of the people on that team dude you do great videos you make a lot of things by ear and they sound amazing so good job uh you do great at what you do yeah yeah um is that is that hence the name tone deaf is that is that where it came from you're just like uh I gotta do split tracks for everything. I'm just gonna double down on the name Tone Deaf. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tone Deaf just basically was a result of me saying, I don't care if I have one or two things off pitch, if it's the wrong octave or whatnot. Um, I'm just gonna make a video. That's it. Yeah. You like it or you don't. Yeah, yeah. Now, honestly, that's like that in and of itself is like an admiral, admirable trait. Uh, honestly. Is there anything else that you want to talk about? Um, let's see. I was going through my likes on Twitter and I saw your uh, Chiefs video for the Super Bowl. So funny. Oh, the Chiefs video? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that video, I, I was, I showered and then I was <laughs> literally about to drive two hours to my friends to go watch the Super Bowl. And, uh, like, I just got the idea and... Those fucking O.J. Simpson videos are so funny. Hey, hey, Twitter world, it's yours truly. Those videos are so funny. I was like, I was like, I kind of want to do something like that, and then it just kind of like just went from there. And <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's definitely one of my best videos. I yep. think that Com fucking go commit Jeez. arson, tip a chair. <laughs> that that and uh, that fucking those set visuals I did recently. Oh I yeah, put... that was awesome. I've never put that much time into into anything video like in my life, and I literally just sat down for like two weeks straight, and 
just fucking worked on it non-stop. And that's like the first and only time I've ever worked on anything like that. So hopefully I can do some more visual shit like that in the future. Because that, that, that shit was fucking fun. That, that like reinvigorated like liking Vegas again, honestly. Yeah, definitely. It's always great when there's like a certain thing that you work on. And afterwards you're just like, I love doing this. Up until you get to a certain point and Vegas crashes after you've worked for like an hour and you forgot to save. Okay, I never <laughs> forget to save anymore though. I I always control S after I fucking do like anything. It's, it's insane. Yeah, I'm like control Sing like probably every five seconds or so. And that reminds me, for the first time ever, I had something on After Effects crash on me. I had been working on this project for maybe an hour and a half. And I never, never, never save until, like, I'm done on After Effects because I've never had it crash on me before. So, about an hour and a half worth of video gone. So, sorry, oh. Jab. Round two for our soccer is going to be delayed. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad that you guys are still doing soccer. That's fucking cool. Yeah, I was watching an old fucking Atomic Baby video, and I was like, hey, like, People don't do fucking soccer anymore. I was like, let's do this jab. And jab was like, I'm down. Fuck yeah. Especially now that we all have plenty of time and everything. Yeah, because that was the shit back in the day. I remember uh, Brady was doing a lot of those videos. And it was just always fun watching these videos go back and forth. Yeah. Are you guys having like any like specific guidelines? Or is it just make a video? Um, The guidelines are any source. A song has to be NES song. Oh. Yeah, that makes it that makes it fun. Yeah, I felt like definitely just doing the NES songs really brings back that old soccer Y2PMB Y2P tennis match feel. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I'm I'm excited for that now. I'll have to keep my eye out for it. Yeah, I was probably gonna work on it today. It just sucks because every time I open up the project again, I think about all that progress I lost, and it really pisses me off. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Fuck. That, but. After Effects has never crashed on you. I've heard I've heard After Effects crashes, not very frequently, but every now and then I've heard it crashes. No, I've never really had an issue with it crashing. Like, if anything, just Vegas crashes on me all the time. But I've never really had After Effects crash. Hmm. Most likely because my version of After Effects, um, it's not pirated, so it's a legitimate copy of After Effects. Yeah, I wonder if pirated versions crash more. I I've, I've always wondered that. I don't know why. I feel like they do. They pro honestly, they probably do. They're Adobe. Adobe is a big enough company. They probably figured out some like way to fucking sneak in something. That it's just like, well, we can't stop them from pirating it, but we'll make it fucking insufferable and unbearable for them. Yeah. <laughs> that that's probably what Sony did. Honestly, I it would not surprise me. But I think that's I think that's all I got for you. Where can people find you? on social media uh you can find me on twitter i have two different twitters my first one is marlin m-a-r-l triple n or if you can't find that just message me on twitter.com slash 157 just the number is 157 you can follow me there and i'll send you my other info or youtube.com slash tone deaf with two a's you have twitter.com slash 157? Yeah, it's my private what is Twitter. This oh, that's funny. Yeah, that, that's a cool that's a cool app. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that there's certain things I can't say on my regular Twitter because of different ties I have. So basically that other Twitter is just like my rant account where I can just say whatever I want. Yeah, yeah. So cool. Well go check out Marlin. Make some great fucking videos. Check out do you have, like, a playlist of your rips that you've made, by chance? I don't. I'll probably, if anything, I'll get to that today, and I'll get them all together that way. I think a lot of them are listed on the wiki page I have. Oh, But, nice. yeah, if anything, I'll get together a playlist, and I'll send it to you. Hell yeah. I want to I wanna look through that sometime. This is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to check out my other videos, and don't forget to like and subscribe. You won't regret it. It...